Welcome to Real People, Real Voices. I'm your host, James Jackson. I'm your co-host, Dr. Wayne Moore. Good to see you. And this quite possibly might be our first broadcast of the year. Possibly, Happy yeah. New Year. Happy New Year to you, brother. I like the look. You're looking pretty good today. Yeah, I'm right there with you with the uh, spectacles. <laughs> with the spectacles, yeah. We all we're at the we're at the point in life where we need some help vision vision wise. Yeah, absolutely. Always a pleasure to host with you. Speaking of help, we've got a lot of help uh, sponsoring the show. If you could run down the list for us, uh, Lee Carson and Crawley have been with us and doing a great job in Sugar Indianapolis uh, as it relates to uh, uh, attorneys. And then we have the Furman Care Christian Academy with us. Public, uh, Marion County Public Health Department is doing an outstanding work in the midst of COVID-19, ready to tra transition the city of Indianapolis into vaccine. Owl's Modern Clothing and Shoe. Uh, I've seen a lot of brothers walking around with some of the products that Owl is selling. They're looking pretty good. Martin University is with us. Uh, I want to thank them for being with us again. And His Place Eatery. If you need a, a good um, meal, go to His Place. Ribs and seafood is their specialty, uh, as soul food are their specialty. North side window gutter and cleaning, doing a great job. If you didn't get them done now, uh, later you can get them done now. So uh, it's warm enough to do it. Give them a call. Yeah, we're so grateful to God to have so many wonderful sponsors. And we want to encourage you all to check us out on YouTube. You can go yes. to the WHMB TV 40 YouTube. Watch this show when it's over, as well as other ones that you might miss. And like us on Facebook, Jackson. <laughs> like us on Facebook. We're there. We're there with all of our friends and uh, we certainly thank you all. Thank you for a wonderful last year. And this is gonna be a great year. We're surviving COVID. Yes. We've got a great guest uh, gonna be with us, Greg Wilson, who is the director of the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. He'll be with us in just a few moments. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. We're glad that you've joined us and uh, we're excited about what we have for you today. A lot of great information. You know, Dr. Morris, that time of year, the yes, Martin Luther King yes. celebrations are planned and everything is happening. Yeah, we're going to find out uh, what's going on as it relates to the Indiana Civil Rights Commission and what they've been doing since he's been gone. That would be something to, to share with the, the state and the city of Indianapolis uh, as it relates to Dr. Martin Luther King. And we're going to have a great time with uh, Brother Wilson. Yeah, so we're joined by Greg Wil uh, Director Greg Wilson. And uh, incidentally, I serve as one of the commissioners on the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. And we'll talk uh, a little bit more about what that department does with the state. But uh, Greg, there's a big event coming up. And uh, if you could please talk to us about it. So again, thank you, uh, Pastor Jackson, and thank you, Pastor Moore. Appreciate you having me on your show and an opportunity to talk about IMLK events. Again, I know there's so many events around the city, but we think this is a very important event, and we've tried to change it and make it more accessible to the community. I think we've grown it over the last few years. So let me just tell you a little bit about it, why I'm excited about it. One is we have some great partners on this event as well. Uh, again, we work with the Martin Luther King Holiday Commission. Uh, Ask Me is a, a big supporter of this event, uh, as well as Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, which we know uh, Dr. King was a member of that fraternity, and then also Indiana Black Expo. And one thing about the Ask Me piece is we know that he went down to uh, Memphis uh, to help the uh, union, Ask Me Union down there uh, before his death. So. Uh, these are great partners to have to help us put on these events. The first day, now we used to have three events, but because of the pandemic, we've had to cut back. Uh, we used to do the actual day of service at uh, Watkins Park, where we worked in the neighborhood, cleaning up the streets, cleaning up uh, homes or properties for people, uh, helping some of the local business, VFW Hall on, on uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. So. Uh, we've done a lot to, to, to make a difference in the community. So we're pulling back on that event, but we think we still have some great events. So let me start out with what we're going to do first. 
And so the first thing we're going to be doing is the replacing. This is something when I, I came to the agency, I wanted to make sure that people know that this was part of the city, this was part of the state. So we worked with the War Memorial so that on the 14th, excuse me, on uh, January the 13th at 6 p.m., we'll be placing a wreath honoring Dr. King right on Monument Circle in the heart of the city. We thought that was important so people know that it was about bringing people together in unity. So that's why we wanted to put it in the heart of the city. It'll be, even though it's uh, we're still doing social distancing, people wear masks, but we thought still having our program where we have an opportunity to talk about Dr. King and his legacy and what we need to do uh, move forward was still very important. Also, we're working with downtown. I know some of you have been down there to see some of the military lights show that they put on down there in the evening. Well, guess what? We now have them doing a show for us honoring Dr. King. Well, they'll do some highlighted, uh, uh, illuminated images, and uh, you'll actually hear uh, some young people from the city and the state who will be uh, basically re, uh, basically uh, doing the I Have a Dream speech. And so it's about 15 young people, and each one of them have a part in reciting the I Have a Dream speech. That's new. That's different. So that's where it kicks off at. Then we, because of the pandemic, as I said, is uh, we won't be having an actual event. It'll be more of a virtual event. So you'll be able to watch us online. All you have to do is go to one of our social media platforms at uh, IN Civil Rights, and uh, you can pull us up, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have them all. Uh, we're all a part of those things. The next event will be uh, at the uh, State House, and that will be on January 14th at 12 p.m., where the governor uh, will be speaking as well as other dignitaries here in the city. And then we'll be giving out our, our awards. And I just wanna let you know what awards we have. We have the Freedom Award, the Chairman's Award, the Trailblazers Award, and the Champion of Civil Rights Award. And these are, we'll be giving to different people from around the state. And actually they'll still be part of the program. We'll still be doing it virtually. But one of the other things is uh, the host of, one of the hosts of the show will also be our speaker there, and that that's Pastor Jackson. So you definitely want to listen in and hear his words as we always talk about bringing people together. It's all about unity. It's all about how we can move forward and make a difference in the community. So again, is uh, it will be uh, we'll be putting out the information on our website. So go to our website and you'll be able to get the link uh, to be able to watch it live uh, because that's so important. Also, you'll be able to watch the event on the circle, the reef place and live as well. So those are some of the things that we're doing, but I always like to leave you, just in case you have uh, any questions or not sure where to go, you can reach us at 317-232-2600. That's 317-232-2600. Or again, our website is in.gov backslash ICRC uh, if you wanna find out more about these events. We're excited about everything that's uh, taking place. A lot's going to be going on uh, those two days, Greg. For those people who might want to um, attend, are there uh, reservations or is this just uh, solely going to be uh, virtual? Um, kind of talk to us about that. Well, the actual event at the uh, State House, which is on the 14th at 12 o'clock, That'll be a totally virtual event. You can see the award winners. You hear the speakers uh, talk about uh, Dr. King's legacy. We'll also have a couple singers there who will be singing, uh, paying tribute to Dr. King. Now, that's a total virtual event. But the one on the circle, the reef placing, that's not a virtual event. But because it's outside and we'll ask people to social distance and wear their masks, you're more than welcome to come down. Uh, we try to make sure that uh, in case of inclement weather, we'll, we'll move it to another location. We'll let people know. But uh, we've been able to do it so far without any problem. But that will be an actual event that you can attend, you can enjoy, and watch the uh, Alpha fraternity place the wreath on the, the monument circle in honor of Dr. King. And then also one of our partners at IPL, they actually do a light show like they do with the uh, different events, light up that building, they'll do that with MOK. 
sounds like a lot of excitement that's going to be uh, going on and taking place down there for that. So many years uh, after Dr. King's uh, death and the sacrifice that he made and the dream that he had, we see some of that uh, coming to pass uh, in a lot of aspects. Why are these events still so important? Well, you know, Pastor, I had a, uh, an opportunity to go to the 50th celebration in Memphis a few years back. And uh, I think I participated in that uh, march that they had, uh, and uh, it was 10,000 strong. I mean, very, look, uh, the words of Dr. King are still true today. We need to work together for the greater good. We need to remember people who have been discriminated against, who are left behind. Uh, we need to make sure that, uh, again, we are servants, and we should give back, and we should do all we can to support the least of thee, right? I mean, that's what's important. But for us here at the agency, it's all about civil rights. It's all about protecting people's rights. Uh, and I know in the next seven, we'll talk a little bit more about that part. But uh, we just know that it's the right thing to do. And Dr. King's dream still stands today. But, Seth, i just say one thing is we've got to help push it forward. We. Absolutely. And uh, we'll cover a lot more in the next sec segment. And we have more coming from Director Greg Wilson of the Indiana Civil Rights Commission. Stay with us. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Real People, Real Voices. And we're joined by Director Greg Wilson, Indiana Civil Rights Commission, uh, co-hosting on today with Dr. Wayne Moore. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Dr. Moore, if you would, please um, thank our sponsors before we get into this next part. Yeah, we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Lee Kossel and Crawley for being with us for, I don't know, three or four years. Uh, then we have uh, Fervent Care Christian Academy, been with us from the very beginning. Marion County Public Health Department, who's doing a great job preparing the city of Indianapolis for the vast nation. Uh, Al's Modern Clothing and Shoes, um, happy to have him, Martin University, and his place, Eatery, and North Side Window Gutter and Cleaning are our sponsors. Thank you. Um, Director Wilson, I should appropriately say, um, the Indiana Civil Rights Commission, when you took it over for the state of Indiana, had a backlog uh, on cases and have caught up pretty well. So for those who are who are watching, if you could give them the information about uh, if they have an issue, a civil rights issue in the state of Indiana, how they can contact and, and get the ball rolling on a resolution and kind of talk about your strategy and goals for um, making sure that all those cases are caught up on. Yeah, uh, thank you again, uh, Pastor Jackson and Pastor Moore for having me on the show. One thing I would like to say is, again, is, you know, a lot of people don't, discrimination can be disguised, it changes, you really don't always know. But I always tell people, if you feel something is wrong, if you feel something you're not sure about, I mean, it just feels like someone else, different races being treated better or you treated differently in some way or if it's based on a disability, uh, you should call us. I mean, it doesn't hurt. And I'll, I'll get into the process, but it doesn't hurt to call us because we can talk to you and, and see what's going on. Again, you can call us at 317-232-2600. Or again, you can go to our website, in.gov, and even fill out a complaint form there. But most of the times I tell people uh, is that what we do is we have areas of enforcement, all right? But, but, and we're guided by our statute. And it says, this is what Indiana Civil Rights Commission is responsible for or can do. And here's the laws that uh, that's based on. The, the first thing I would say an enforcement area would be employment. You're on your workforce, something happens, related to your job where you feel like you're being discriminated against, you contact us. The second area is public places. That's restaurants 
and uh, different public venues that everybody's allowed to go in. Uh, education, and a lot of people didn't, don't realize sometimes that we deal with discrimination in education. Uh, credit, uh, that's another important issue as well, is that you pay attention that when you apply for loans, and, and a lot of these things, with, especially with credit, it's very difficult. That's why I tell anybody, no matter what, you document everything that you can, you get any documentation that you can. If you see examples where somebody, again, is treated differently, you treat differently for someone else. Uh, that's that's so important that uh, you pay attention to that. And that's what anything is. Documentation, time, dates, who, when, where, uh, witnesses that were there. Uh, and you do the best to your ability. I mean, again, is... Uh, we, we will try to, to help as much as possible when you're writing out your complaint, but it's important that uh, to help us to be successful, uh, to you to be successful, that we do a thorough investigation because we're neutral. We have to look at it in a neutral fashion, but the more information you have, the more supporting documentation have that, that helps us doing the investigation process. So again, we have what I've have a couple areas. One is intake. Initially, intake is the, the area that takes in your initial complaint. They'll take a look and they'll see uh, where it actually is. What, what does it fall under as far as um, the discrimination? Once they've done the interview with you, and I always tell people, uh, the, 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 the intake people, they're not doing the investigation. They're just taking the information. So I know a lot of times people call in, they want to tell them everything that's happened, and there's a lot of emotion involved. We understand that, and we're very sensitive and compassionate, but they don't actually do the investigation. They are basically getting all the information to identify maybe the area of discrimination. And then what they'll do is uh, they'll put that together and turn it over to our investigators. And so what our investigators will do, they're the ones who actually will contact you and say, listen, I'm the person that's investigating this particular case. Uh, once they've done that and made contact with you, you'll get a letter, but also normally you'll get a phone call as well. Sometimes that investigation can take a while because it just depends on what's happening, how much information uh, that we have to gather. And uh, Pastor Jackson, you've seen some of those things. It's a lot of information to be gathered. Uh, Let me some, ask you some cases are easier than some. What'd you say, Question. Let me ask you a question, Director. Excuse me. Um, I want to compliment you on the fact, uh, according to uh, Brother Jackson, uh, Pastor Jackson, you caught up a lot of the cases. But my concern is you caught. A, there's a difference between catching up cases and solving cases. Uh, can you elaborate on that? There's well, a difference that's, between uh, ca ca catching up cases and solving cases. Yeah. So there again is there's two categories: probable cause, and no probable cause. And so no probable cause is where we say that we've done the investigation, we don't find any uh, cause as far as discrimination there. We don't see it. Then the other one is probable cause, where we find that there was something that did happen. There was some uh, discrimination we believe that did happen. And so then they both take different pathway. The probable cause, uh, we try to do two things here. And this is something really we push since I've been here is the real mediation piece. So we try to bring both parties together. We have a mediator, it's our ADR uh, section. We have a mediator and they will work to see if we can find a resolution. Resolution can be monetary or it can just be and resolve the issue uh, that's be before us. And a lot of people want just this to happen. Like I'll, I'll give you an example. One person just wanted to make sure ramps were on the particular uh, uh, access entry, just want to make sure ramps were there so that people with disability could get up those ramps. That's all they wanted. They didn't, they weren't trying to get monetary. And we were able to work to get that done. And so it's that's an example. Yeah, that's and we have, huh? Solve cases. Yeah, we solved lots of cases. And uh, you can go to our website and you'll see some of that. And even when we do our end of the year report, we kind of talk about the percentage of probable, probable and non-probable and kind of the mediation, I think uh, last year, uh, when I first came, we were doing something maybe about 100,000, 200,000 mediation. I think last year we did maybe about 600,000 uh, in mediation, uh, settlements with people. And so that to me was very good for our agency because we have a cap versus a lot of uh, different like EEOC and the federal government, they don't have the same cap. 
that we have. So yes, Pastor, uh, we have done a lot to, to resolve the issues with cases. So it's not solving, them, but resolving the issues. And I think we've done a pretty good go job because I think initially when I first came, there's about 400 cases in the backlog. And so that's a lot when you talk about legal issues, reviews. And so I think we've done a good job with that part. Okay. That's great. I think, right, that's, phenomenal. I think that's phenomenal if, 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 if the community is getting the results that they need. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you get them and sometimes you, you don't, it just depends. That's why I, I emphasize more so than anything, you've got to get as much information as you can. And we do have the ability to do subpoenas where we go in and request records and we do a thorough review of everything. But the key is we need to know if there's any witnesses, we need to know time, dates, uh, has it happened uh, other times? Uh, don't overlook anything like that. I don't care if you think it happened, one, document it. And then that way you, you develop the pattern of maybe a behavior that has happened when it comes to that discrimination that you believe has happened in one of these areas of enforcement. Documentation apparently is very important. And she had, she documented time, dates, others that she's seen doing the same thing uh, that her young son, and, and listen, you can't discriminate based on familiar status, and that's family, where sometimes people won't let uh, say, oh, well, we'll put you and your, your children back over here, you know, by the, big, uh, by the uh, playground, or we'll put you, they can't do that. I mean, you have a right not to be pushed somewhere or steered, they call it steering, steering you in a specific place, and that's called uh, familiar status, where when you have these young uh, children that people try to uh, steer you away from maybe this area over here, and you can't do that. So you're basically okay. telling us the Indiana Civil oh, Rights Commission is alive. Dr. Moore, Dr. Moore, you're running out of time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Director, yeah, Director. it's alive, <laughs> Pastor. That's all Moore. I wanted to say. <laughs> Director, we're out, we're out of time. Thank you okay. for being with us today. We'll be back after these messages. Thank you for being with us on Real People, Real Voices. Dr. Moore, thank you for hosting today. Director Wilson, as always, thank you for taking time to share with us. We'll see you next time.